Welcome to the Radiate Wellness Podcast. I'm your host, Christy Clemens Hoffman. Each week we will discuss tools, tips, and ways to radiate your best life ever, interviewing practitioners, authors, and luminaries to help you on your path. Wellness, joy, peace, abundance. What do you want to radiate? Hey, welcome to the Radiate Wellness Podcast. Today we radiate resilience with Sammy Aaron, founder of The Resilient Activist. And Sammy just got back from this really awesome conference and I couldn't wait to hear more about it. This is with your new BFF. <laughs> I love that. He's one of my idols. So, who, yes, who is, tell, yes, who is who this? Is That's a little teaser that you're doing yes, there. Yes, it is a teaser. So I spent a three-day weekend with Al Gore and about 1,100 other of my, my very best friends. Yes. Um, it was part of his Climate Reality Leadership Training par- Program. Climate Reality Leadership Program. Of course, it's right. reality because um, we're living this reality, but that was his inconvenient truth. Exactly. Yeah, and so the first day of the event, he spent about two and a half hours wow. with his PowerPoint presentation, which was kind of the inconvenient truth that he's added to, mm-hmm. with mostly pictures from within the last two years or so of all these bizarre weather events, you know, like five inches of hail in Guadalajara, Mexico in July. Five inches, I'm sorry. Five feet of hail. What? Five feet of hail? Five feet of hail. People had to be dug out of their cars in Mexico in July. So it's an understanding about how the polar vortex has changed because of temperature warming. And so picture after picture, graph after graph of pretty much every major climate event. So increasing CO2 levels, increasing methane levels, Mm -hmm. um, famine, drought, flood, fire, you know, insect infestation. It was like the whole doomsday scenario. Right, the whole the end of end of world scenario, and it was it was fascinating actually to see how much of these things are happening in in different places around the world, and right. and to really visually connect to it, and then see what studies pointed to that, and to see that graphically, um, and yeah. then and then at the end was. And he just focused really on energy consumption, okay. um, transportation, and um, CO2, reducing CO2 levels, and especially like closing down coal-fired power plants and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But he had example after example of countries. For example, um, Chile had set a goal of being fossil fuel free by, I don't have the statistics in front of me, but by a certain date, like 2030 maybe. But even have a fixed date. To have a fixed date. So then he's showing the graph of, so if they set that in like, you know, 2015, here's where they were on this graph. They were at, you know, at this level of um, 100% renewable energy. And here's this, you know, here's the scale. So they're down here. 2016, they're here. 2017, they're here. 2018, it starts scrolling. And it went on and on and on. And so, so many of the government, so many business models are exceeding the expectation of consumer interest. Absolutely. Actually making these changes happen well before they planned on it. Absolutely. And so there was there was a whole section of here's literally what is happening. And and he refers a lot to the drawdown program. Are you familiar with that? I'm not. Okay. So drawdown is a series of um a hundred technologies and or culture shifts that mm-hmm. Um, can be measured to reduce, to draw down the level of CO2 in the atmosphere. And okay. it's, it's ranked according to the cost and the benefit. 
And for example, the number one is um, reduce CO2 emissions from refrigeration. So our heating and cooling systems, our refrigeration right. systems can make the biggest impact by having those, um, that kind of equipment, that kind of technology go to zero waste. Okay. So, so is that even possible? I oh, mean, absolutely. Okay. I mean, there's also drawdown are technologies that already exist somewhere Good. in the world. Mm -hmm. Someone is doing them, but just not to the scale, to scale that they could exactly. be done. And then some of the social changes were interesting. So Drawdown was compiled by a gentleman by the name of Paul Hawken, mm -hmm. who actually is going to be in Kansas City September 14th to Wonderful. a sold-out climate event. Wonderful. <laughs> it's at Johnson County Community College, and they just announced today that it's sold out. But... Um, he he gathered together over 300 scientists around the world to come up with this list of 100. So in the top 10, two of them are pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, solar arrays is one and, you know, certain transportation changes. But these two, one was empowering women nice. reduces our carbon emissions. And number two, what? giving women access to birth control and reproductive health and their own decision making has a huge impact because women see things differently. Women sure. see what's good for the family, right? right? What's good for our livelihoods and for our healthy homes and our healthy food. And it's a different mindset than a lot of the governments that we have now, the corporate mindset of what's good for our profit. Like it's a whole different perspective. And right. so they've actually been able to statistically show this in different countries where women have been given micro loans, for example, exactly. to, to begin um, starting small businesses and how that totally shifts the culture and how sustainably those communities can live when it shifts more towards a feminine response. So it's, it's all interesting. So that was part of Al Gore's, um, the positives. And here's what's happening. Here's what's available. Here's the technology that's available. Mm -hmm. Drawing on what Drawdown is presenting. And Drawdown is its own organization. There are, there are two Drawdown organizations in Kansas City now that are, one is earmarked towards just the general public, and I think they're, I'm sure they're in all kinds of cities all over the world, um, where there's like an introductory course, and then if you decide to sign up, it's five weeks, and each person who takes the course decides, picks out two of the hundred that they're going to focus on. Like, that's what they're going to learn about it or research it or volunteer with an organization dealing with it, maybe make a donation to someone that's working right. on that project. But they're going to take two of those and embrace it. And so draw down. Draw this down the level the of CO2. Wonderful. Right. Okay. So this, but this is the organization name too? It's an organization and it's a book. So okay. that's actually a great big book that you can get. Okay. And you can go to the draw down, probably just drawdown.org. Don't quote me on that, but um, okay. and see all the materials from the book. So, uh, so drawdown. This is an organization. There is a, a website, and they they teach you as well how to how to draw the stand. You were, um, and I think you said there was a book. Right. So it's not necessarily that they teach you how to do it. Okay. Drawdown simply took these three hundred scientists and came up with this list of the top 100 technologies or social changes mm. that w could have the greatest impact on drawing down the levels of CO2. So, okay. so to explain that a little bit, um, CO2 is, is one of the greenhouse gases. So methane is, there's, there's other and greenhouse CO2 gases. CO2 being carbon dioxide. Correct, carbon okay. dioxide. And so there's an, a layer around the Earth's surface of these greenhouse gases. Mm -hmm. And they actually protect us in some ways from too much sunlight coming in. Exactly. But as that shifts to whatever the, um, the chemical content of that is and whatever, uh, as temperature warms, as mo more CO2 is released on the planet, that gets thicker. And so it, it begins to absorb and retain more of the sun's heat. 
Whereas yes. when it's thinner, it reflects it back out. Right. right. So so that's the deal. So a few years ago, it was determined that if we could keep the level of CO2 at 350 parts per million or less, which would keep our temperature level stable to where it was at the time, yes. then um, we would be able to prevent a lot of the... Um, the bizarre weather patterns that we're having right. and excessive drought, excessive fire, like the whole kit right. and caboodle. So 350.org, some people may know about that. Yeah, that was that. That's what they were on a mission to do. Well, <clears throat> didn't really happen. So we're over mm-hmm. 400 and about 415 parts per million. Oh, the no. temperature has already risen um, more than a degree centigrade around the world some places are more than that and um, so as we head up to 1.5 degrees if we get to two we are in really really bad shape if we can keep it at 1.5 which a lot of people a lot of scientists believe we can do that if we make a lot of these shifts there's still going to be major impacts so we're already having the highest temperature recordings around right. the world, right? right. The hottest Everywhere. June ever, right. the hottest July ever. Um, Alaska has um, um, ticks. They're, the Inuit population in Alaska is besieged by ticks because it's not cold enough right. to kill the ticks. In Minnesota, I learned that they're not allowing ice fishing anymore because the lakes don't stay frozen long enough. Mm-hmm. There is a, a lake in the in the Alps where there's never been a lake before. Right, in the glacier. I mean, right, in the glacier. Yeah, yeah. And so so there's all these things that are happening. And, and what happens also with CO2, it's released by, um, well, it's released by nature. In the, mm-hmm. in the nighttime, trees and plants do release some CO2, even right. though they mostly absorb it, but right. they do release some. But CO2 coming from our cars, mm-hmm. from our manufacturing processes, mm-hmm. from destroying forests, uh, especially right. old growth forests, and that burning that happens, that's Absolutely, all CO2. Yeah. And then we're reducing the number of plants, trees, that are able to absorb that CO2 back. So it's kind of this negative downward spiral. Um, So the more CO2 we release, the higher the temperature is going to go, and it impacts these weather patterns. Absolutely. And so drawdown was an effort to um, mathematically put Mm -hmm. numbers to um, if we reduce, if we can implement this particular technology to this particular level by this particular year, then we can bring down levels of CO2 by this amount, and here's what that may cost the global community to make that happen, but then here's financially the benefit to that. So Absolutely. it's all it all goes together. So Drawdown has local classes in Kansas City area for the general public, as well as working with all our local governments. So they had a first meeting, introductory meeting, was not advertised to the public. They earmarked all the mayors, like the greater Kansas City area, so all right. the little cities in Westwood, Johnson Park, County, Liberty, right, Liberty, Wyandotte Liberty, County, right. um, and the mayors, the city councils, the uh, public works departments, the utility departments, Mm -hmm. probably some other people, and they had 130 people show up. That's fantastic. And that that is ongoing. And so that organization is working with those entities Mm -hmm. on what's the first thing we can implement, what's the next thing, you know, that those large businesses that governments can implement. The other organization is working with individuals Mm -hmm. to teach them about it and help them pick out two of the topics that they're really interested in to learn more about, maybe to um, get involved with an organization that's working on a particular aspect. These topics would be um, maybe pollution, about Yeah, it has to do with recycling, with transportation, Mm -hmm. with... uh, energy usage so like um, implementing solar arrays for example sure um, is in the top 10 okay. um, things like um, maybe planting green spaces green spaces it has a lot to do with food production oh sure and you know it's like just 
everything you think of, water quality initiatives, and but it's very clear that each in this big book, mm -hmm. each of these gets two pages. Mm -hmm. You know, so here's that information about this. Even they talk about implementing solar panels in third world countries. Right. Because what they're doing right now is burning all their wood in order to have mm -hmm. to for cooking, in order to be able to read or whatever. And so by just shifting that, it's cleaner technology, it's cleaner in their homes. Exactly. Right. And once the equipment's paid for it's free energy. It's free electricity. Exactly. So, um, so there. It's it's so. It's just fascinating. Right. Yeah. I went to a presentation um, of a, an entrepreneur creating solar powered food dehydrators. Mm -hmm. Right. And that type of thing. So this. I mean, this energy. It's cheap. And well, it's portable. Yeah. I think one of the interesting slides was the sun gives us enough energy in one hour mm -hmm. to provide electrical power, whatever energy power for the entire world for like, you know, a year or something. So it, it's very interesting. It's out there. You know, people talk about, well, that, can't we just invent something that sucks up carbon? You know, we could get this real high technology mm -hmm. and, you know, there is something. Yeah. It's called trees it's and right. plants. You know, it's like, <laughs> oh, really? Huh. So right. it's, it's all... It's a, it's a culture shift. It's not what we humans, our Western human minds, have been taught. Well, our so, American minds, too. Well, and European capitalism. minds. Mm -hmm. and all, I mean, any of that Western capitalistic philosophy. Right, exactly. Yeah. Right. So, so a big part of the weekend was indigenous wisdom, indigenous presenters, sure. understanding the impacts of all this... Um, the climate change on communities that are underserved, mm -hmm. communities of poverty, Absolutely. communities of color. And we don't, it's sometimes hard to see that relationship. But mm -hmm. for example, right here in Kansas City, we have an urban core. Right. We have neighborhoods where there's not one tree to be found and there's not even any grass to be found, right? right. It's all cement. Mm -hmm. It's streets, it's sidewalks, it's driveways, it's cemented over parking lots. Mm -hmm. And that, that can uh, shift into what's called an urban heat island. So in that area, in Kansas City, at you know 28th and Troost, it can be 10 to 15 degrees hotter oh, I've noticed than that, yeah. out in Leewood and out in the suburbs where there's trees. Right. So it's a huge impact to communities that can't afford the extra electric payment for their air conditioners to crank them up, right? right. And and there's a whole, um, it's a huge part of it. So the other component, so Drawdown is kind of a bunch of solutions, is the Green New Deal. So yes. are you familiar with that? I am, and I don't know if I could explain it, so could you explain it for our audience, our sure. listeners? So it's a resolution that's been submitted to our Congress mm -hmm. that patterns itself after the New Deal from back right, during the from Depression. The depression. Mm -hmm. and, but it has this shift for clean energy, yes. clean jobs, and job training. Right, because the New Deal, for those who may not be familiar, it created jobs in terms of infrastructure, in terms of public buildings, and just put many, many people to work at a time when there was mass unemployment. We don't quite have those unemployment numbers now, but we still have people who need to learn a new, a new job or a new trade, people who may have been in industries that don't necessarily um, exist anymore or are changing so rapidly, it would be good to, to train them to do new jobs. So Right, yeah. and so part of it is they'll look at, for example, the coal mining industry. Right, right. Example. And so if we're shutting down coal plants, which are happening at a tremendous pace, that was another one of those graphs mm -hmm. that was like, well, here's where we are in 2010, and here's where we want to be in 2019 on shutting down coal plants. Here's mm -hmm. where we actually are in 2019, and it was like way up there. Right. Like, this is, this is fantastic. However, there are communities built around 
mining oh, coal. Absolutely. So what do you do with those people? And so the Green New Deal brings in high tech training, clean energy yeah, training, um, with the and, and part of their premise is the ability to unionize, the ability to um, stay like every uh, decision that they would make with mm-hmm. this, every resolution that they would put forward, includes social justice components right. and understanding the impact, not just economic impact, not just environmental impact, mm-hmm. but the emotional impact and the social impact of all these changes. Right. So that's the Green New Deal. Um, it's up for proposal in Congress. If if the resolution is approved, that's just step one. Mm-hmm. It's not actually going to do anything, right. but it allows them to begin to create the plans, the targets. What would be the first step that we would go go for um, to begin to implement new regulations, new energy efficiencies, and um, so it's. I find it very. Uh, inspirational. Well, I think if our government can do that, it would make an impact for generations and generations to come, and it would truly make them uh, memorable. There are so many opportunities to do good for the country, Mm -hmm. and that would do um, so much good. So I really would hope that they would do the right thing there. Now, we haven't mentioned uh, you are also the head of the Resilient Activist, and you were on the po- this podcast earlier, month, a couple months ago, I mm-hmm. think, um, to talk about the Resilient Activist, which is an organization to teach people how to be environmental activists, right? So, well, it's actually how to support them when they are. Yeah, support so, them. Yes, that is an in- important distinction. Yeah, because, um, and that was one of the really important takeaways from the climate reality leadership training weekend Mm -hmm. that their their mission is in order for us to make this happen because when we listen to the news when we when we see videos of 11 billion tons of glacial ice melting in one day and that's just the one day because it's 90 degrees in Alaska and when we see permafrost permafrost melting in Siberia because of wildfires and the heat index in uh, around the UK and in upper Europe that that filtered into the Arctic and so so we see all these things, and it's freaking scary. Well, there right? are 20-year-olds now getting vasectomies because they don't want to bring more children into exactly. this world. Exactly. So so from the climate reality perspective, they believe the best resiliency tool we can have is to know what we can do and yes. to be motivated to do it. Yes. So right? what can we do, Sammy? Yeah. So... Here's, let's switch sides of the brain. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And let's go to the side of the brain that says what's in our hearts. Mm -hmm. And there are, it's been such an interesting journey. So the Resilient Activists, we started about a year, year and a half ago as a nonprofit here and thought that we needed to stick with the, what we call our Enviro tips. Literally, what can we do? What, you know, if you want to have, uh, eliminate food waste or learn how to compost, we have all these great articles on our site. And they're, it's all really good stuff. And the site again is? It's theresilientactivist.org. Theresilientactivist.org. Yeah. Good. And so we have all of our Enviro tips that touch on what we call our five essentials for a resilient world. Okay? So the first one is to reconnect to nature because if we don't understand how nature provides for us as humans, Mm -hmm. we don't understand why we need to protect it. Absolutely. Right? The air that we breathe literally comes from (laughs) healthy trees. Like, this is not like an idea or concept, right? This is not woo-woo. This is not pie in the sky. Exactly. And what do trees need, right? Right. So they need clean water. They need pollinators. They need wildlife. They need understory. They need, you know, they need birds. They need, trees need all kinds of things to have healthy soil and clean water. And and it's all connected. So, So that's the reconnect to nature. The second is to, um, I did this the last time I was on your show, and I say <laughs> these every single day, um, reconnect to nature, um, respect all life. Yes, and respect all life. it's not just 
human lives, and that is vital right. that we do remember our indigenous populations, people who are underserved, who need Absolutely. our help, but also respecting the life of all of wildlife because it all reflects on us. We are, every air molecule that we breathe has been breathed out by some other living creature since the beginning of time. Absolutely. Hi, this is Christy. I just want to say that we here at Radiate Wellness hope you're enjoying this podcast. It's free to you, and we hope that you find it informative and inspirational, heck, even fun. We have just three small asks of you to help us radiate growth. First, please hit the subscribe button on whatever platform you're listening on. That way, you'll receive a notification every time that we have a new podcast episode out. Next, please give us a thumbs up, a like, or a five-star review. If you're feeling inspired, a positive review wouldn't hurt. These two small things will help others find us when they're searching for great podcasts. Finally, please tell your friends about the Radiate Wellness Podcast. Better yet, show them how to find us and how to subscribe. If everyone did that, we would double our audience. Thanks a lot. We really appreciate it. So respect all life. Regreen the planet is the Mm -hmm. third one. So when we have all of our urban heat islands, and even in Leewood, where there's lots of trees, there's an awful lot of parking lots. There's an awful lot of Absolutely. shopping malls with, with rooftops. There's cement driveways. There's green grass that has no benefit to any pollinator, has no benefit for our clean water or our clean air. So all of these things we can do yeah. to re-green our spaces. Wonderful. Okay. The next is to revamp our spending. Yeah. So when we make a decision what we're going to buy, we can choose to buy local, meaning it hasn't been shipped from Chile or someplace Absolutely. or Australia or, or China. We can we can buy um, fair trade mm-hmm. so that we know there hasn't been slave labor involved with that Absolutely. or child labor. We can buy organic or chemical free right. so that we know that um, whatever's been used on food products, for example, are not impacting our water quality. You know, there's Absolutely. a dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico oh that's about the size of Texas. And it comes from all the fer- chemical fertilizers that are coming from farmers yes. in Iowa, Nebraska, everywhere along that Mississippi. And it, it goes down there, and there is nothing that can live in there. So it's impacting not just wildlife and sea life, but it's impacting the economic life and the life of the people that, that live down there, that's their homes. So Absolutely. so we can make choices as to what products we buy. Absolutely. Revamp our spending. And the last one really is one that, um, that not everybody understands, but it's replenish our resources. So what does that mean? Well, it might mean composting. That's mm-hmm. a great thing to do. And there are a couple of residential compost pickup companies oh, now yeah. in the city. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty um, easy. It is, yeah. And a lot of people are composting their own mm-hmm. food waste. But it's also giving back to your own soil, leaving your leaves over the winter, um, replenishing what is in your garden mm-hmm. with with healthy things that are going to help build up soil quality. It's giving back to... Um, uh, used clothing stores, for example. Oh, yeah. You know, rather than throwing things away, it's it's recycling. It's doing all those things that um, can really make a difference and prevent us from just extractive processes, constantly Absolutely. getting brand new raw materials from the earth. Mm-hmm. So it's replenishing the resources, using things over and over, getting rid of any single-use anything, no single-use right. bags, no single-use straws, no single-use styrofoam. You know, I, I left a restaurant today because I'd never been there. I wanted to give it a try. It seemed real sweet in a little local restaurant. And I walked in, and they only serve their meals on styrofoam. Oh, no. It wasn't just carry-out. It was their oh, their food no. plates, and that's I'm like, you know, I just can't eat in a place like that. No. So, so that's the resiliency. The resiliency is to know that you're you have the 
tools, that mm -hmm. someone has the techniques, right. the education, the background, the training. You could support them. Mm -hmm. You could support them financially. Mm -hmm. You could volunteer with them. Absolutely. You could go get a job with them, right? There's all kinds of opportunities to make a huge difference. And within that, there are resiliency tools for yourself. So these five essentials, what I just talked about were externally what people can do. Right. We have all kinds of um, environmental articles on each one of them. Really clear, simple steps, Good. big impact. Sometimes we just need to have it broken down for exactly. us. Exactly. Yeah. The flip side is, or the other side of the brain mm -hmm. is, you could take all those and think about them internally. Mm -hmm. So reconnecting to nature, do that for yourself, for your own well-being, for Love all it. of the studies that show the benefits of time spent in nature mm -hmm. mentally, emotionally, cognitively. Um, there's so many studies out there now, right? Bring nature yeah. into your home. Mm -hmm. Bring Have pictures of nature around you. I mean, it's, there's so much to the be Victorians done. The Victorians knew that. They brought nature into their homes in terms of bringing in animals, maybe even taxidermy, but yes, absolutely. Yeah, because that actually, the Industrial Revolution in mm -hmm. that time period is right. when a huge shift, when you look at the graphs of CO2 levels going up, it really started, there was going up a little bit since since it was first, we can first track it, which is about 10,000 years ago. Yeah. A little slight increase. And then the Industrial Revolution came, and all of a sudden, that graph is going up. Absolutely. And so for people who recognize we need that connection, even in this industrialized times, even as we're building cities with streetscapes and sidewalks and driveways and you know Absolutely. and one tree in the yard rather than a forest with understory and berries and right. you know um, yeah that's very interesting so each right. of these five essentials can be used internally revamp our spending what do right. you spend your time on mm -hmm. what do you spend your time listening to good point. how much of your time do you spend on having a healthy body on taking care of and paying attention to what you're eating. Absolutely. So each one of these five we use as resiliency tools that mm -hmm. we will be teaching um, programming, we'll be teaching specific things from that internal perspective, right. encouraging people as they step further into that external perspective, mm -hmm. making those changes, because the more people learn the more they understand, mm -hmm. the deeper that heartfelt sadness, panic, anxiety, yes. freak out, deciding to have a vasectomy at the age of 20. Right. It's happening all over the world. It's yeah. happening all over the world. Yeah. And people are just being very anxious about it. Even my 12-year-old mm -hmm. says, Mom, the world that you left for us, you, you just like pass this off and expect us to fix it. Mm -hmm. Well, um... I know that here in Kansas City, this this episode is going to be um, this is going to be live. I believe the twentieth of August okay. on the twenty second. Um, Radiate Wellness is showing the film Prosperity. So, and I know we had talked about that. Mm -hmm. And this film is really wonderful because it does address these things in a more positive light because it does seem every day we turn on the news and Greenland is melting and we're learning, mm -hmm. we're le we are losing permafrost and the glaciers are melting. But this gives us some hope and I found in that film, I don't want to give any spoilers, but just a couple of things. Procter & Gamble is starting to produce shampoo bottles out of ocean plastic because there are islands mm -hmm. of plastic in the ocean mm -hmm. and paying fair trade to um, some indigenous cultures to collect it. So some things are really happening and, and voting with our dollars is huge. You know, voting with your dollars is humongous. Voting with your vote is humongous. Yes. And so... And Both are essential. Yeah, the whole piece about I vote for the climate... Yes. Is, has got to become all of our mantra. And that it means voting be. locally. Yes. And in not every just election. federally. Yeah. Right. Because it has to happen. And it was so inspiring um, to know with, like, this local drawdown group that however many cities that 130 
people represented. Yeah. It was pretty much every city in the Kansas City area. Our yeah. local governments care about this. That's wonderful. And there's, yeah, there's a bunch of pushback from Washington. There was just a thing signed uh, yesterday to begin to Dismantle really, the Endangered Species, the Endangered species oh Act. And there's, there's been provisions that, you know, uh, resolutions introduced to eliminate the Environmental Protection Agency and roll back all the clean oh air gosh. and clean water provisions. And you know what? It doesn't matter because it's going to happen locally and it's going to happen with individuals like anybody watching this that says, I think clean air and clean water are kind of important. I kind of like to breathe. I'd like to breathe, <laughs> and I'd like to be able to have food grown that isn't yes. going to give me cancer or isn't going, because part of the additional, the higher levels of CO2, plants love CO2, and the more they absorb, the less uh, nutrient dense Absolutely. that food is. So if there's a different nutritional quality to that. So it's, it's so complicated. That, that was another piece. Well, and you know, it's so intricate. It's all Everything connected. is connected. Every single decision we make, every product we purchase, yes. every item we eat, it's every place we decide to go and how we decide to get there right. is completely connected to our long-term health. And the other piece is, here in Kansas City, we don't see things like sea level rise. No. Right? We don't see it. But in Miami, they're calling it climate changed. Oh, no. Because they have this new term now that's called sunny day flooding. Oh, so no. this has nothing to do with torrential rainstorms. Right. This is perfectly sunny days, but a higher level of sea, higher sea levels right. that are flooding with high tides coming back in through the stormwater systems. Oh, my gosh. And so people are are experiencing that every single, every oh time there's gosh. a high tide. And the other piece to that is now there's all this gentrification inland mm -hmm. because people with money who have seashore, you know, beachfront property have the money to go start building these inner city communities. And then they're taking those over rather than building those up. Mm -hmm. so, so it's this whole social cultural thing we don't see it here mm -hmm. yet, but we're what we're going to start seeing. Kansas City, according to weather.com, Kansas City is ranked as number five in the list of cities that will be most negatively impacted by climate change. Really? And it's because we are going to start having refugees from the United States sure. coming into the Midwest. Coastal refugees. That's exactly right. In addition... Wow. Because of the way Kansas City is laid out, and we have so much highway system, and we have so much urban sprawl, right? We have um, a higher level of um, cement, yeah, than almost any other city in the country. Really, well, cement not only reflects heat, but it holds it. It, it holds it, and it reflects. I mean, it continues to exude CO two. So. So this whole piece about how hot it's going to be here, mm -hmm. our Ogallala Aquifer in western Kansas mm -hmm. is on track to be completely empty within about 20 years. Oh my gosh. And that waters all of our crops around. It sure does. So when, we, so when my neighbor every day has his sprinkler system on, every single day, he's using, our water actually comes from, from the Missouri River and the Kaw River, but that aquifer, the whole thing is interconnected. Yes. It's like, oh my gosh, how much water can we waste to keep grass green? Grass, which is not native grass, doesn't have deep roots, isn't adapted to our climate, and we think needs to be perfectly green all season. So it's this mind shift. What is a beautiful garden? Right. Is a beautiful garden something with five to seven plants in a particular arrangement with big blossoms that are the same all year? Is the is the perfect garden Stella de Oro daddy lilies, pompous grass, burning bushes, um, Barbary Japanese Barbary, none of which has any benefit for any pollinators. Right. None of which has any roots deeper than this. So they need to be watered constantly or they wilt and we paid good money for that garden right mm -hmm. and we've mulched it so there's no habitat there for our native bees and our native critters 
to nest because they're mostly ground nesters. So now we've reduced our population of what birds need to feed on. Oh, it's wow. like this whole thing. So if we start off by shifting our human perspective of what we've been taught is a beautiful garden to instead be what's beautiful for the aesthetic eye, the human eye, mm -hmm. but to what's beautiful and full of life for wildlife, it's a whole different aesthetic. Yes. So when you have, you're growing coneflowers, like an H in your yard, yeah. those beautiful purple coneflowers, yeah. and you have those dead heads on there, yeah. why that's bird seed in there. Sure is. When you deadhead it, because you're taught you should deadhead those, they just don't look very nice, right? right. And they bring in disease and insects. Well, yeah, because insects are in there getting at the seeds. I mean, if you leave those up all winter, you could have goldfinches sitting on those dead heads in the winter Just pecking out down. the seeds. So it's a different it's a different way of thinking about our homes, our businesses, mm -hmm. our gardens, right. our transportation, our communication methods. It's everything. It impacts every single thing we do. Right. So that can be so overwhelming. It can. And there we get to the interior essentials of resiliency. Like, how do we live with this? Right. Right. Right, right, right. Now, after this training that you've gone through, you're able to go out and, you know, teach even more than you have been before. Because I know that you've been really active, especially since you started Resilient mm -hmm. Activist, going out and speaking to different groups about what we can do to help the environment. So, But you're certified now to teach even more. Correct, and we can use all of his material. All of so Al Gore's cool. materials. Yeah, Woohoo. so we so can take like, that two and a half hour wow. PowerPoint. Yes. He has a 10 minute one we can use. Wonderful. And then we can pull whatever um, concepts, ideas, are important either locally or for a particular community of people. Right. And so we can customize that any way that we want to give oh, those fantastic. presentations. And there's climate reality leaders pretty much in every city right. around the world. Yeah. So, you know, if you have people on the podcast that are not here locally. Oh, you have um, a lot of outside of Kansas City listeners. Yeah, you can just go to climaterealityorg and search your area mm -hmm. and find... Um, find presenters and there's a 24 hours of climate reality well there's two events coming up one is a climate the international climate strike which is going to be september 20th and 21st wow. and i want to get back to that in a second yeah. but then um climate reality is doing t 24 hours of climate reality november 20th and 21st and so that's where uh climate leadership leaders want to do many present presentations, mm -hmm. you know, multiple ones on those days. Mm -hmm. On the um, climate strike, that's a little different. That is where, and this ha doesn't have anything to do with the climate reality, it's different organizations. Okay. So it's the Sunshine Group and the, or Sunshine Movement and the uh, Extinction Rebellion Movement and some of these nonviolent organizations that are set up to, to uh, promote nonviolent protest. Like that's their whole Absolutely. thing. They want to disrupt government and business and traffic, whatever they can do from a nonviolent perspective. Mm -hmm. And that is so powerful. So I'll just I'll just say one idea. Yes. If people Google um, on YouTube, Belgium's the country Belgium's sing for the climate. S I N G sing for the climate. In Belgium, they had people in all different cities and little hamlets and whatever get together as a community mm -hmm. outside and sing this uplifting song about the climate and what Wonderful. we can do and when we should do it. And there's hand movements and all this stuff. And it, there's a ton of videos that they've it. done. That's, that is peaceful protest. Sure right? It it's joyful. Oh, it's absolutely. uplifting. It's community building. So I really encourage people to put those dates on their calendar, September 20th and 21st. Okay. And then for climate reality to get the details, like understand the details, um, November 20th and 21st. I know September yeah. 21st, I think there's already a large... Um, 
large scale protest scheduled like mm -hmm. across the country. Yeah, yeah. So, a lot of organizations are mm -hmm. participating in that. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I know. I was just in Europe for a month not too long ago, and there were like weekly large demonstrations mm -hmm. across Europe. Mm -hmm. I remember mm -hmm. getting stuck in traffic in Geneva. And, and it's led by the, the kids, the college students, yeah. high school mm -hmm. students. Yeah, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. Yeah. I mean, they're like, wait a minute, we got to do something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I know back to this uh, film, uh, Prosperity, that we're going to be showing next Thursday. This is the 22nd of August. If you listen to this after the, the 22nd of August, I'm really sorry. But you can see Prosperity online. Just Google Prosperity. There's many ways to see it. Um, but one of the things that stuck with me is if everybody stopped buying chewing gum within like it was a really short order I want to say like four days although it may have been four weeks the whole chewing gum industry would come to a stop it's just very interesting it but is. then who's that going to impact you know where does right. that come from and what communities would be impacted so unfortunately there is no one answer right, right. but to know that that one particular little tiny industry could make such a big impact. Exactly. It's and really our powerful. our decision, our one mm -hmm. decision to stop buying gum could make such an impact. Right. So our decisions of where to spend our money and to actually give a crap where we spend our money yeah. is big. I know there's yeah. a, um, a push to try to get Trader Joe's to eliminate much of their single-use packaging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and um, you know, if you can find the, there's a petition online to do that. Um, so these type of changes are, if you go or going to a restaurant and saying, "I'm sorry, I can't eat here. Your your plates are are styrofoam and they don't recycle easily in our in our market." So making these type of, type of informed choices and right. voting with our dollars. Yeah. And voting, 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 voting. Yeah. So let me just add one more thing that Please. we're doing. Um, I'm going to tell a story without identifying anybody, but someone I met had someone that she met who had been visiting family out of town with her family, and the visiting, the family they visited with didn't recycle. And this person was taken aback, was right. like, what do I what do I tell my kids? So the kids were with them. They would always recycle. Do I say something? Do I not say something? Do I just like collect stuff and take it in our suitcase to take home? What do I do? And there was this anxiety, right? There was right. this. And who are these people? They're not recycling. And now we have a relationship issue happening here, right? Do I bring it up? Do I not bring it up? Is there going to be a big fight? This is the emotional, that is a simple, that is one eensy weensy thing. I and have this conflict <laughs> often, yeah. right? It's very, very difficult. So what we are working on right now, we've just started, had our first brainstorming meeting. Wonderful. To start a consortium of mental health and other wellness professionals that we will educate mm -hmm. about the unique mindset of people who are fearful, anxious, worried, or overwhelmed about wow. what's happening with the climate crisis, what their role is, how do they incorporate that into their lives. Sure. You know, this whole emotional component of it that, you know, is really at the core of what the resilient activist is. Right. And, um, you know, the mental health component, having lost my older son, yes. who was a deep environmental activist, who... The more he learned, the more he understood, the more he saw the complexity, the more he could look at something like chewing gum and say, but it's not that simple. You know, I mean, right. it's like nothing is that simple. And the constant pushback in our thinking, he was just going overboard and like, get over it and it can't be that bad. You know, all this is, is just a huge part of severe depression and suicide and, yes. and even around the world homicide of environmental activists. So... Right. For us, so we're going to build this community of climate aware mental, mental health, health professionals and other holistic practitioners. So we will educate that. them and we will begin to expand out programming based on what comes from that. So that's huge. That is that our is our huge wonderful. mission. And it's an unfilled, unfilled niche 
in that community. It really is. Mm-hmm. That is completely like new ground, forging new ground. Yeah. yeah. You know, climate anxiety. Yep. That's and the, I mean, there's terms for it eco anxiety, pre traumatic stress. Oh, sure. For people who know what's happening. Solastalgia is a new term uh, that represents pining for lost environments. Mm. So there's a big move here in Kansas City, um, save the last Kansas City forest. That's the Lime mm. Creek Forest of the northern North Kansas City. Right. And um, that's an emotional connection that the people up there who have loved this, it's, it's really the last natural place. We have little pockets around Kansas City um, of undisturbed wildlands, but this place is really special. Mm -hmm. And to turn it into soccer fields um, or a parking lot or a school building, which is what's being proposed, um, it really got to people. And so to have that, the resiliency tools Mm -hmm. to be able to say, okay, here's the reality. Right. Here's who I'm either going to have to fight or here's what I'm going to have to just accept has already happened, Mm -hmm. right? And and here's my emotions with that. What kinds of tools can I use to get myself through this and still see beauty and light and joy and have a good time and, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's... um, it's a mindfulness practice, it's a meditation practice, it's the opportunity to be pragmatic, Mm -hmm. to look at overarching philosophies and ancient teachings, to really see what is the shift in humanity and think about our evolution to becoming a restorer species. Wonderful. That's who we are. That's who we are. It's a movement that's happening around the world, so there you go. Wonderful. Sammy, thank you so much for coming to talk with me. I, th- I truly feel this is important. This is really important work. And uh, I want to encourage everybody to visit the resilientactivist.org. And then Al Gore's, your BFF's website is? Climatereality.org. Good. Mm-hmm. Good, good. And good. then drawdown.org. 350.org, Sierra Clevelers. There's so many amazing organizations So many ways to get yeah. involved. And yeah. so we'll put some of those links in the show notes. So be sure to visit those. And Sammy, thank you again Thanks for being for on. Radiate Wellness is a community of holistic and alternative healers and consultants based in the Kansas City area dedicated to helping you create spiritual, energetic, and physical well-being. To learn more about our practitioners, services, classes, and events, or to schedule an appointment, visit us at radiatewellnesscommunity.com.